Now that you guys know how to use regular expressions, let's apply them to vScript. So to create a regular expression, you use an object. So let's do set and then give this a name. In this instance, I'm going to be looking for this Joe character here. So I'm going to just call this name. You can call it what you like. It's just a variable. And then you're going to set it to a new reg exp. So just like that. Now you grab your variable and give it a pattern. So your pattern is going to be your regular expression in the form of a string. My pattern is going to be searching for the word Joe here. And now I'm going to go ahead and test to see if that pattern is in my string. So get your object that has your pattern set to it, do test. And then inside these parentheses, you're going to put the string you're testing to see if your pattern exists in. So this is going to return back, this whole thing right here will return back true or false. So what you could do is do if this, then message box, or do whatever you wanted. Otherwise, do this and if. So right here would be if it doesn't exist in your pattern, and this would be if it does exist in your pattern. So you could do an if statement like this, or a, you could have it do a loop or whatever else. Again, this is just going to return back true or false. So if we just message box it out, start this, notice it says true here. If we changed our pattern up and hit start again, now notice it says false. Now there's additional properties that you can use too in this pattern. One of them being ignore case. So if you set ignore case to true, this means that even if this is a lowercase Joe here and we hit start, this is still going to come back true. If this is set to false, however, and then you were to run this, now it's going to come back as false that this doesn't exist in your pattern because we're being case sensitive here. So ignore case set to false is going to be the default. So unless you're going to set this to true, you don't need to create it. So setting it to false would be more just for readability to understand what all is going on in your code. The next property would be global. Setting global to true would be good when you want to pull out all the instances of a match. Otherwise, it's going to be set to false. This is the default. And what this means is that it's going to search through your string and it's, as soon as it finds a match that matches your pattern, it'll go ahead and quit out. Global to false would be good if you were just testing to see if a string had another string in it. Because as soon as it finds it, it doesn't need any more evidence. It'll quit out of that string. When you'd want to set this to true would be with your other regular expression functions and you want to specifically deal with all cases. So let's set this to true so that it doesn't stop after the first match here. And then let's change this function to be replace. Same thing here, we put our string that we're searching for our pattern for, and then a comma, and then the string we want to replace our pattern with. So every time there's just a Joe, I want to replace it with the full name of John. So if we were to hit start now, now notice it says instead of is Joe Huckman in town, it says is John Huckman in town. You'll also notice it affected our second instance and that's because it replaced this with a full John right here. If this was set to false, now when we run this, the first instance is changed and the second instance you noticed is not touched at all. That's because it stopped right here. So again, either setting it to false or leaving it alone, now notice it only affects the first instance that it comes across. Now of course, if you were to actually do this, you would probably want to put borders around here so that you specifically only targeted Joe by itself. Let me change this to true and run this. And now you can see the first instance has changed, but the second one is not. So make sure your pattern matches exactly what you want. If you wanted to use this replace command to update your current string, you would simply put your current string like so and set it equal to your command right here. So now this is going to grab the current string, which is this up here, look for the pattern in it and replace it with whatever's here. So let's replace it with Adam and then set it up to our string. So now our string's been updated. And from here on out, if we try to use string, instead of having Joe here, it will have Adam, as you can see here. So these are your three properties. These two properties are set to false for their defaults, but if you want to change them, then you can set them to true. Otherwise, you can leave them out. So I'm going to stop here, and we'll continue on with the other functions you can do in the next video.